rapid season. 24 goals. And got a lot of shots on goal. They'll need a lot of shots on goal. But tonight, put Grace Barber through her paces this evening. And on the other side for the Razorbacks, Kelly, you know, stretches this season. The Razorbacks went through runs where they didn't give up necessarily any goals, but they didn't score much either. Yeah, I know they've been practicing these past few weeks just on the emphasis of scoring and, and getting numbers in the box and having that good service and the fundamentals of what it takes to get the ball in the back of the net. And you see Chambliss from Missouri State, number 24. Freshman of the year in her conference. Something to note, not in the starting lineup tonight, the MVC player of the year, Grace O'Keefe, will need to see if she will play at any moment. But we are underway for the first round of the Women's Soccer Championship. As both teams try to settle in from the opening kick. Whipped into the box, and just like that, the first goal of the game. Barely a minute into competition, the Razorbacks strike first, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, if that doesn't set the tone, I don't know what will. The Razorbacks came off, you know, a hard game against Vanderbilt, losing in penalty kicks, but here they are ready to, to make their name known in this NCAA tournament. Tankersley puts that one away with her head. Makes it a 1-0 advantage. And just how Coach Hell, I'm sure, draws it up on the sideline, caused chaos, and they caused the first goal off the head of Ava Tankersley. Eighth goal of the season for her. Razorbacks are backs looking for more. One thing Coach Nelson did say earlier this week, though, about his team is no matter the score of this game, he knows they will be tested, but he also knows his team won't give up. They will play the full 90 minutes uh, regardless of that score. Certainly mentioned his girls will compete for all 90 minutes. Part of his core values he's instilled in Springfield of chemistry, character, compete, and communicate. You're going to have to do a lot of competing the rest of the way trailing a goal. Kelly, as a goalie yourself, when you that first goal goes through the back of the net early on in competition, how do you reset uh, between the posts to lock in for the rest of the game? Yeah, I mean, Camille Day, she, she's been through this but once before, so she's a veteran, she's used to it, but in this, in this atmosphere, in this moment in time, she's just got to focus on in her mind that the goal or that the the score is zero zero you know she can't concede another goal but she's got to also count on her team to put one in the back of the net as well the razorbacks trying to set something up again too long and we'll reset it midfield Arkansas traditionally starts with a 3-4-3 this evening, but we know anything with Coach Hale that that is a fluid formation. And Zoe Sussy, you see there, takes herself up from the pitch. It will be a free kick just outside the 18 for the Razorbacks, an area, Kelly, where Arkansas can be so dangerous. Yeah, they practice set pieces uh, probably more than any team in the country, but I also know Missouri State is very good on defending them as well, so this will be a true test. Ball whipped into the box and pushes just past uh, the net and Camille Day. Goes out for a corner for Arkansas as they look to keep the pressure on the Bears. Quick corner. Razorbacks play it into the box and an easy one for Day this time around. Gets underneath it. And the Bears will try and play the advantage.
Arkansas's throw, far side. Possession been with Arkansas most of this game as Missouri State not been able to really string anything together offensively, Kelly. Yeah, I think Missouri State right now, we're starting to see a little communication struggle. We saw Camille Day call, and some of the defenders looked like there was some confusion back there on who was going to clear that ball. But I think hopefully this 1-0 score will, you know, they'll reset their mind and, and focus on just moving forward and getting past that goal. Ellie Potagil with it here near side. Whips it in. Right to Camille Day. Be as far as the Razorbacks can play the advantage. Going back to what you said earlier about possession, I think the Razorbacks are doing what the Razorbacks do best. They're pressing high. Uh, we're five minutes into this, and you're right. The Razorbacks are holding the ball most of this game so far. The ball been in the attacking third for the first six minutes of this one. And another one will trickle in right outside the 18. Two-nothing. They're from DiFilippo. Able to roll it past Camille Day. Out, out past her outstretched arms, Kelly. Yeah, that, that was a tough one, to be honest. I mean, you can't give the Razorbacks that space and time. That is all what soccer's about, is, is eliminating the space and time that you give your opposing team. And um, unfortunately, it caused a goal for Missouri against Missouri State. She gets her seventh. Senior from Quebec, Canada. This will be her last ride as a Razorback. Part of that Elite Eight team a year ago. She has it here. As again, two goals not enough for the Razorbacks. Looking to get a third quickly. It'll be a corner. As you blink your eyes and Arkansas already back in position to make something happen. Ball played in, and that's going to sneak in, I believe, at the far post. Keeper off her line, can't get there. Three goals. In six or so minutes for the Arkansas Razorbacks, it's getting late, early, Razorback field. Yeah, you can see the defeat there on Camille Day's face, just the frustration at this point in the game. Um, you, you hate to see this, but at the same time, credit to the Razorbacks. Um, they came out hungry and, and ready to, to get on the board. Well, from Ellie Ponigel's right foot, I don't even believe she thought that was going to go into the goal, the little chip shot. Falls in far post. Five minutes and 53 seconds into this one. It is getting out of hand for the Bears and head coach Kurt Nelson. I believe that makes in the last two home matches for the Razorback 10 goals. Put seven up on the Kentucky Wildcats back before the SEC tournament and Kelly this looks like a team after losing to Vanderbilt on penalties in, in the SEC tournament that is ready to to make a statement ready to get that bad taste out of their mouths yeah I think they left uh, Florida just disappointed and and we're starting to see the result of how they felt when they left there you don't see this too often but it looks like we're going to Start over. Might have been an issue with the clock. No harm, no foul. Missouri State will try it again. And first action, Grace Barbara has seen tonight. She'll decide to bring it up herself. The Razorbacks will go right back to work. 
in the attacking third. Quick throw, the pace stays on for Kobe Hale's led Razorbacks. Ball crossed in. Dangerous situation just far of the post and Camille Day and the Bears can take a sigh of relief. It'll be just a run of the mill goal kick for her. Kelly, on the other side of it, Camille Day already has given up the three goals. But if you're Grace Barbara, you're up 3-0 early on in this one. What goes through your head as a keeper? Uh, you have to stay mentally and mentally engaged the entire 90 minutes as well. No matter how little or a lot of action you're getting back there, you have to stay engaged with your team. And a fortunate and great situation, too. She has such a good kick, kicking game, that um, they're able to incorporate her just like they did there to help get the ball up and get it wide and create more opportunities. I believe talking with Coach Hale earlier in the season regarded Barbara as probably the best kicker uh, that he's had in his stint as a head coach here. Played back in. I won't take any offense to that, even though I played for Coach Hale. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't mean it. <laughs> it's true, though. The Princeton transfer has come in and made quite the impact, like we've mentioned. 11 shutouts on the season. You see the fancy footwork from Filippo. I feel like that's a situation when you're up three goals, you can try and maybe go for the tricky shot. As it'll be a throw for Chambliss and the Bears. Again, Grace O'Keefe from Missouri State, not in the starting lineup this evening. O'Keefe won the Valley Player of the Year Award. A big loss for Kirk Nelson and the Bears. Hopefully she'll be able to sub in later on this evening. Don't know the, quite the status. Coach Nelson did talk about earlier this week that uh, how tough their conference was and that how tough it was to play those games this year. They played between 22 to 25 players each game, which definitely is not typical across the country, but it does give players minutes, and I think that's something that he could use as the depth from the bench tonight. Missouri State trying to go on a run. Ball will go out of play. Barbara will get uh, the goal kick. As you see there, O'Keefe, Chambliss, but Kaylee Benedict. The tournament MVP, the midfielder for the Bears. After the successful first campaign for Kirk Nelson, and talking with him earlier this week, Kelly, he's mentions that everybody keeps saying they're surprised that they did as well as they are. And, and he, and I'm sure his girls on, on the, the field here and on the sideline, wasn't a shock to them. They knew what they were capable of coming into this 2020 to campaign. Yeah, he said no one expected us to be here. They picked them to be eighth in the conference and, and they actually won it all. So he said we're here to shock the world and that's our objective and we're going to give Arkansas a game. Ball wisely cleared, forcing the Razorbacks to reset. There's only a brief reset. This ball immediately played back in to the box. It'll be a corner for the Razorbacks. See Coach Nelson, his first year at the helm. Terrapin, getting some head coaching experience after being the associate head coach of Missouri State for the last handful of seasons. Played in again. Potta Jill whips it in and back of the net. We'll need to check. Flag is up. We have an offside. It, is, it will remain a 3 0 game. Oh, you know, Tankersley so frustrated. She wanted that one so bad. Just got there a little early. 
Yep, she was definitely offsides. An easy call for the linesman. One of the nuances of soccer. Can't be behind that deepest defender when the ball's played in. But circling back to something you mentioned earlier, Kelly, about the Missouri Valley Conference being so deep. There's another cross played in for the Razorbacks. Day has it measured. In the final of the Missouri Valley Tournament, it was the eight seed uh, Murray State Racers that they had to beat. So an eight seed making it all the way to the final, I think shows a lot of class in, in what the future of that Missouri Valley Conference can put out every year in terms of being a mid-major conference. Jill with it. Her older sister Anna has an assist on the evening, and she's chasing a bit of history this year as well. Sits tied at 44 for the career goals mark. Played in again. As the Razorbacks already have three goals on the evening, are getting their chances ad nauseum. Yeah, Pajo has 44 career goals, which ties Julie Williford, mark she set back in 2003. Been slow going for Potajil this season. Slow going comparative to her season a year ago anyway. Saw trying to work something into the box. Whipped in. Day gets a paw to it. Ball stays alive. Danger still real for Missouri State. Huge save by Day, though, just getting a touch on it and having a defender being able to clear that. Just because you're three goals down doesn't mean Day is not done fighting. Has 11 shutouts of her own as a bear. Coach Nelson did tell us, expect her to make the saves, which you don't expect her to, uh, and that's one of them. Um, she's good at the fundamentals, but she can also make miraculous saves like that. Razorbacks on the corner. Cross comes in, back of the net. And they'll give the goal to the Razorbacks, I believe. Make that 4-0 in the first 30 minutes or so of this first round of play. And you can see the dejection there from Camille Day. Give that one to Jessica Filippo. Already has a brace through 30 minutes. Arkansas is so tough on set pieces, and you just have to try to eliminate the amount that they can get. But you see here, they're also just fearless in the air and, and putting the ball in the back of the net, and they've sure made, made the most of those opportunities tonight. Filippo comes in like a wrecking ball, gets her second goal of the night. One thing I think that's really helped Arkansas in this game is Coach Hale couldn't set it any better. Uh, they didn't have to focus too much on practice earlier this week before the selection show on who they were playing. They got to get back to the fundamentals of, of being them, and I think that's something they lost in the SEC tournament. They finally look like Arkansas tonight, and I think the scoreboard says that. I would be inclined to agree with you, Kelly. Coach Nelson earlier this week described Arkansas as having a chaotic style, and certainly that last goal was a little chaotic for the defense of the Bears, and it's it's been indicative of the four up on the scoreboard for the home team. Pop 
Out of Jill in space. Trying to set something up, but denied. And another opportunity for Filippo trying to get the hat trick in the first half. Don't see that happen too often at any level of competition, but ball will push just wide of the post. Jill receives, plays it off for Erzin. Ball will stay with the Razorbacks in this attacking third. They've pretty much set up shop this first half in this attacking third. And that ball played over the crossbar for the Razorbacks. And Camille Day again will reset her side from the goal kick. At this point in the game, I think Coach Nelson's team is going to have to really dig in on those core values he talked about. He said they have four core values as a team. Chemistry, character, compete, and communicate. He said it's hashtag C4 on social media, and he knew their core values were going to be tested tonight, but that's where they really fall back on their leadership and their core values as a team, and He's hoping that's what's brought out on the field tonight. So hopefully they really dig in on that. Chambliss was trying to make something happen for Missouri State. One of the rare times they've gotten the ball into their attacking third of the night. But just like that defense to offense, the Razorbacks running in space. Touch too strong. For the Razorbacks. But again, even when it's too strong of a touch, when you try and get the interception if you're a Missouri State Bear. It still somehow just magically ends up with the Razorbacks. It's been the story of this first half. It's again played in. And over the bar. That'll be the 12th shot the Razorbacks have attempted in this young first half. Lots of open Razorbacks left unmarked in the box there, and you just can't do that and give give them the time and space to put the ball on frame. In for Razorbacks, number 17, Shana Flynn will check in. The junior from Brampton, Ontario, Canada. I'm sure she's used to this kind of weather. As it is, again, a brisk night. This game had been played about 24 hours yesterday. Kelly as Dave flies through the air to make the save. I was gonna say if it had been played about 24 hours yesterday, it had been a nice 75, partly sunny skies sort of evening at Razorback Field. That's Arkansas weather for you. Certainly is, that ball pushed wide. From Ellie Potagil. Her and Anna, her sister, pick up a potent one-two punch for the Razorbacks. As I'm sure Camille Day would like to say, she had that one covered all the way through as it sailed over the crossbar. Is there a state trying to string a run here? Gracie English with it, trying to build something for the Bears, but dispossessed and back into their defending third. And Kelly, just looking at it, when Missouri State can get the ball onto the other side of the field, they don't even try and get numbers up. It's only a handful of numbers and they play everybody back. Is that just indicative of the, the fear of that counterattack, that potent Kobe Hale counterattack from Arkansas? 
I would hate to say this, but it's true. They, they are being Arkansas right now. They're uh, they're seeing the effect of the high pressure of the intensity and they're they're staying a little bit further back to, to defend that. However, in this situation, they've just got to get numbers forward um, and get get those um, opportunities up on the Razorback side of the field. Certainly have dug themselves a hole early on four nil. It was three nil after the first five minutes. Both sides have settled in. Danger not cleared yet for Missouri State, finally. Filippo whips it in. Just can't curl it in for her third goal of the night. Camille Day has had her hands full in this first half. That's four goals and three saves. Again, last time these two played, the result was 7 0 in favor of the Razorbacks. That was last spring. And coach Kirk Nelson was not quite the head coach, but on the staff. So he's certainly familiar with what the Razorbacks are capable of. That one straight to the keeper. And Day makes the routine save. On cold nights like this, Kelly, as a keeper, do you ever have any concerns with the gloves or the tactileness of the glove to be able to hold on to the ball when that ball is shot in at close range like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, imagine just having the hands we're feeling right now up in the press box. Our hands are so cold, but even with those gloves on, um, there's a little shockness to it. and. Um, I'm sure she felt that, but um, I'd, I'd imagine Grace Barber's hands are a little bit colder than uh, than uh, Camille Day's. I think Grace would be inclined to agree with you. She hasn't had to do a whole lot in this first half. A occasional goal kick. Yeah, and that's when you just shake your hands just to keep them a little warm. Try and get the circulation back to the fingertips. Arkansas. Building momentum for another attack. Starting to get numbers into the box, looking for the cross. It'll come. And it'll be a dangerous corner kick opportunity. Fifth of the evening for the Hogs. One element of many where the Razorbacks are so good and can hurt so many different styles of teams. The Potagil sisters We'll play it in. Anna to Ellie. Ball played in. Danger not cleared. Day makes another save. Looks like she's starting to, to settle in after those early four that went past her. Yeah, Coach Nelson talked about how Day has really stepped up this year in terms of finding her voice and, and helping lead this team. And I think the team could use some of her leadership and her voice at this point in the game. Indeed, since they've been stuck in their own end most of this afternoon, or most of this evening, pardon. The right idea for the Razorbacks. Good run from Filippo. Just ball played a little long. Ellie Pondagel crosses it back in, trying to find her sister. It'll roll harmlessly out of play. You see the younger of the two Pondagels, the 5'5 five five junior. And we're back to number 36, Taylor Berman. Riley Smith, from Missouri State, Sussman. check in. Berman in for the Razorbacks. And for State, number eight, a freshman from Overland Park, Kansas, getting to play in some postseason competition. 
DiFilippo staying after it. Ball played in. And a, a foul interfering with the keeper. Even though I believe Day did a great job navigating the traffic, which brought that down regardless. Yeah, she did. She she held her own there, and uh, glad the ref called that one. That's as far as Gracie English and the Bears can muster after the foul. Dispossessed beautifully in the box. Erzin able to step in front, but Razorbacks will reset. This is where, like you mentioned, Kelly, Barbara's great kicking ability can really flip the field and reset everything so fast. Even when you think Arkansas is buried in their own end, the change of pace comes very quickly. Flynn feeds. The tankers leap. Ball out of play and a throw for Ava from St. Peter's, Missouri. In all likelihood played against a lot of the players from Missouri State as the roster for Kurt Nelson dominated by Show Me Staters. Dangerous ball. Pondagel just going to take it over to the corner. Reset on a throw. Flynn able to get to it for the Razorbacks. Being a hunter. We'll play it in. Again, Arkansas knocking on the door. There's a couple more subs will come in. Thirty-three, Sophia Aragon, the sophomore from Escondido, California, will come in for Arkansas. And for Razorbacks, number thirty-three, Sophia Aragon, number twenty-one. Didn't quite look like Missouri State had fully substituted, so we'll try that again. Kelly, at this point of the game, these substitutes, are they more for fresh legs or just trying to get experience for some of these younger players for the Razorbacks with this commanding 4-0 lead quarter of the way through this first half? Yeah, definitely for the Razorbacks, it is just getting the fresh legs in there, but also getting, uh, you know, some time under their belt. Um, being up 4-0, it gives you that opportunity to, to get that experience and to play against a good team. Run cut short for Missouri State. Yet to record a shot on goal. As Erzin trying to turn on the Jets, bad touch from her will bring up a corner kick, or excuse me, goal kick. Number Couple more subs. For both sides. Di Filippo will play it to the space. Fancy footwork whipped into the box, looking back post, but no reward. Second time for Erzin as well. Will come up empty. It seems after these four goals, Kelly Arkansas trying to just work crosses into the box, find a, a noggin to send it into the back of the net. 
Yeah, definitely. They're they're not going to give up on set pieces, and they're definitely not going to give up on on creating those chances and those opportunities to get the bodies in the box and and put a ball on frame. A dangerous moment for Camille Day. Couldn't get her hands underneath it and played it back in away from her position in front of the net. I'm sure, if you're Coach Kirk Nelson, you, you take a breath when your keeper leaves the net empty. And a pot of Jill trying to find another person in a Cardinal jersey. Great move. First touch from Aragon. On the back heel for the Razorbacks. Unsuccessful day. And has it measured. Don't see this too often, Kelly. A stoppage in the middle of the game. Clock will still run, but Camille Day looks like didn't double not her cleats. Well, it takes more time to take off your gloves to tie your shoes than it would for to ask your defender to do it. So I totally understand. <laughs> looks like Camille is all ready to get us back underway. Wisely just running a few extra seconds off before our referee, Andrew Ellsworth, will tell her to get us back underway. That's definitely one area, Kelly, keepers can, can take advantage of a game or, or sway it to their favor, slowing it down. Once you have that thing in your hands, it's your ball. Yeah, and to be honest, Camille Day could, you know, just tell her team to take a second, take a deep breath, you know, uh, focus on what's to come. I mean, there's still a lot of game to play. Another 45 minutes after halftime. Well, the deficit is large, not insurmountable. Beautiful bit of hustle for the Razorbacks. Here from Erzin. He's been all over on this left wing this evening. Should get it again here. Crossed into the box. Danger still apparent from Missouri State. Hunter gets a boot to it. And pushed wide. Score remains 4-0. I've been so impressed tonight with Arkansas's service and their quality of getting the ball in, into the box or just into space tonight. That's something that they've truly been lacking um, the past few games. And I know Coach Hale said that they've been working on it, but kudos to them because it's truly shown tonight. Certainly has on the scoreboard is Caroline Carter, freshman from Kansas City, will substitute in, getting thrown into the fire of a 4-0 deficit in this first round of the NCAA Women's Championships in soccer. Erzin and Schlauper from Missouri State trying to get to the ball. Danger not cleared, and that'll be an offside. Flag goes up on the far end. Potagel thought she had the record breaker, Kelly, but <laughs> was behind the line. And 45 will just have to wait. She wanted it. There you go, clearly behind the deepest defender of Missouri State when she received the ball. It was probably the easiest goal of the 45 she would have scored, but will not count, stays at 44. Both of these teams have one opponent in common this season, Kelly. Both have played the St. Louis Billikens. Both teams lost in, in different fashions. Missouri State 7 to nothing. Arkansas early on in the season lost 1-0. And St. Louis, the two seed on this side of the bracket, 
might be a collision course for the Razorbacks for a shot of redemption in a couple of rounds. Yeah, I know Arkansas would like to see them again. I mean, Coach Hill talked about that loss a lot um, in our calls earlier, but he talks about how just winning is hard, and that loss hurt them. Um, but, you know, getting to the NCAA tournament is even harder, and so I know they would like another shot at them. Well, the way things are going, they might just get that chance. Of course, winner of this one will have a date with Bucknell and Ohio State in the next round. DeFilippo will sub out. Lori in. Uh, Littleton, Colorado, another freshman getting a few minutes before the end of this first half. I have to say, DeFilippo been the player of the game thus far. Two goals in quick succession. Part of that early onslaught from Arkansas. They're looking to add another. Dangerous moment, Day came off her line, exposed that back half of the net. But Missouri State will weather this storm. trying to work the far side, looking for a cross. Whipped in. And rolls past a couple of feet. Cleared away by the Bears. A couple of players go down. Attack stays on for Arkansas. Great find. But cannot be rewarded with a goal. Just a goal kick for Camille Day. 21 shots in this first half by the Arkansas Razorbacks, Kelly. Camille Day getting, earning her paycheck this, this evening on this brisk night in Fayetteville. In the number nine, Keller Matisse, in for number 22, Ainsley Erzin. Final six minutes of this first half. Last goal was at the 12.30 mark, scored by DiFilippo. State is bowed up defensively after letting those quick four into the back of the net. I'm sure, Kelly, if you're Kurt Nelson and the Bears, you're just trying to ride this storm out, get into the halftime locker room and make some adjustments and try to fight back in the second half. Yeah, I know they're ready for, for just a, a reset. Um, I mean, he talked about how they, they need to knock the ball around more. They need to not let Arkansas get in behind them. And right now they're playing fully back. They're in full defensive mode. They need to find that space. They need to get out wide. They need to make runs and get the ball forward. We'll see what adjustments Nelson and Missouri State will make. You do know on the other side of the field for Kobe Hale, this message is pretty simple. Just keep doing what you're doing. You've got four in the first 12 minutes or so of this one. Keep the pressure on in the second half. After playing for Coach Hale, though, he is going to tell them the score. Play like it's 0-0 because uh, you're not guaranteed anything until that final, final buzzer sounds. So we'll reset to Barbara. Foot race between Aragon and 
Anderson of Missouri State will result in a corner kick. And no, those fans are not shivering from the cold. They're stomping their feet in anticipation of this corner kick. Probably a little bit of both. I wouldn't blame <laughs> them. But the corner kick will result in nothing. Back to Barbara. That ball played poorly. Maddie Augustine steps in front for Missouri State, but that's as far as the run can go for the Bears. It was interesting earlier, Kelly, on the way in with Springfield and Fayetteville being only about two and a half hours away. There were some Missouri State fans tailgating out in the parking lot of Razorback Field. Love to see the, the support of their team traveling down from Springfield tonight. I know Coach Kirk Nelson talked about how after winning their conference tournament, uh, they had hoped you know, for home field advantage, but playing in Arkansas, they can't complain, not that far away, so very glad some of their fans made it out. Certainly farther drives. As we have about two and a half minutes left in this first half. We'll see Missouri State, if they can put one past before the horn. Throw coming for the Bears, and this is the first time, Kelly, we've seen Missouri State able to put some numbers into this attacking third. It's interesting to see if Missouri State can do anything with it. Free kick will come. It'll be Matty Augustine out of Omaha, Nebraska, the senior. One of the leaders of this team, one of the handful of seniors for Kirk Nelson. Big moment here with about a minute and a half left to go in this first half. A goal here could be huge for their chances of a comeback. Augustine again, nothing there. And here comes the counterattack of the Razorbacks. Augustine had two players out wide. That's where you really need to find, find your space and find your team's feet in those situations. Chambliss trying for the slide tackle. Ball will stay with Arkansas. Under a minute now. Arkansas trying to get a goal before the end of this half. Great footwork on display from Aragon. It's Keller Matisse. Get us back underway with the throw with about 20 seconds to go in the half. And out of play and a goal kick for Camille Ten, Day, which nine, might just be about eight, the last action seven, we'll see six, in this first half five, four, of the first round of the three, NCAA Women's two, Soccer one. Championships. And the horn will sound on the first half. It is 4-0 Arkansas in this first round from Razorback Field. We'll have the second half when we return. Looks like, uh, Kelly, the snow is going to not come tonight. Was it? Small chance of some flurries, but it's just going to be windy and cold. At least the snow would have maybe made it look pretty. Yeah, this I know. If, I know if I was either of these teams, I would pray that the snow holds off, especially the goalkeepers. You do not want that moisture uh, touching your hands. Your hands are already cold enough as it is. Uh, you definitely do not want to add to that. Well, it looks like we're getting ready for the second half of action. That wind you see buffeting the flags right out of the north. 
coming in off the jet stream. It's winter officially in northwest Arkansas. Well, I say that. It could be very well 65 and sunny next week. That's just how Arkansas weather is this time of year. As Missouri State is set to get us going. We'll see what adjustments Kirk Nelson and the Bears made in the locker room as they're going to need four goals just to tie in this second half. As the Bears off the opening kick, Kelly at least have some numbers for it. That was something we noted in that first half. That Missouri State struggling to get numbers up when they did have an opportunity in their attacking third. Yeah, I think Coach Nelson may have given his team a talk and just said, hey, look, no one expected us to be here. No one expected us to be in the NCAA tournament. We have nothing to lose at this point. Get our numbers forward and get the bodies in the box. Well, Barbara will flip the field. Ball still going. And will be an end-to-end -end kick for Grace Barbara. It gives Camille Day the goal kick early in the second half. See Kirk Nelson there, head coach of the Bears, his first season as head coach. One could argue Missouri State a bit ahead of schedule in what Kirk Nelson wants to do, making the NCAA tournament his first year. Only third time this program has been to the postseason, first time since 2017, and then you have to go all the way back to 2000 for that first maiden voyage into the postseason. I love what he said in January whenever he took over as head coach that the administration and the players, you know, asked for a change. And they, they said something's got to give here. And it seems like the team has really invested in what he's brought to them. But my favorite thing he said is at the end of the day, it's about my team. It's about the people out there playing this game. And we're extremely purposeful in everything we do. We do check-ins with the team. The X and X's and O's will come if we just get the chemistry down. And Credit to him for everything he's done with this team this season. Certainly, you talked about the team, you know, being a family. Ten newcomers as well, been able to have such success winning the Valley Tournament, being able to take part in the postseason. The foundation is great for what Kirk Nelson and company wants to do as a majority of those sophomores and freshmen are some of the more impact players for Missouri State, whether it's Grace O'Keefe, who won the Missouri Valley Player of the Year, looking elsewhere with Kaylee Benedict, who was the MVP of the Missouri Valley Tournament. Need someone to step up. Who might it be for Missouri State just to get into the score column, try and keep their season alive? They're deep in their own end area where the Razorbacks have been lethal tonight. The wind is also blowing this way, so they're going to be fighting those balls floating back into the end. Ball played into the box, but Missouri State able to clear it for now. Day gets in front of it. Potagil trying to get 45. Denied. Great clearance at the line by Jenna Anderson from Overland Park. The keeper goes out on a block and Jenna stands tall and covers the rest of the goal. Fadigil turned away again, 45. Surely has to be coming for her sometime soon. Yeah, great reaction saved by Day there and thankful to have that defender there to clear the ball. Another corner kick for the Razorbacks. One of the most dangerous elements of their game. Punched away by Day. Potagil on a run trying to get that goal, desperately winning that goal. I'm sure she doesn't necessarily care about the record as much as just wanting it to extend this lead in this first round competition. Missouri State not able to do anything with this run so far. Discombobulation 
allowing numbers to get back for the Razorbacks. Just seems like at every turn for Missouri State, there's a Cardinal jersey and dispossessed once more. You can kind of feel a little sense in the energy, though, that Missouri State's brought to this second half. You can tell that, you know, they said, okay, we, we, we've got to come out and fight, and I think they've brought a little more energy than they started with. Yeah, certainly the mission is clear. Going to have to score and score a bunch for Missouri State. and There might be something, you know, it's hard to see on film. As you see Camille Day, something that's hard to see on field is just the pace of which Arkansas plays at. It's it's hard to translate until you actually see it, and that might be something uh, that Missouri State just wasn't prepared for in this first half. There's that ball sent into the shrubbery behind the dugouts. Prodigy will get us back underway. See Rutherford, St. Peter's, Missouri native. Went to Francis Howell North High School, a perennial power in the bigger classifications of Missouri soccer and Missouri football as well. That'll be a foul. Free kick awarded to the Razorbacks. Filippo. their legs taken out. Not a clean tackle from Missouri State. And we'll put Arkansas in a, a spot it likes to be in a set piece. Ready for the free kick. Under the wall. Easily handled by Day. Don't see that too often, Kelly, uh, on a free kick trying to go under the wall. To be honest, though, that's where Arkansas is actually very dangerous. Um, having the ball being kicked around in the box like that, they just somehow end up getting it in the back of the net like that. They able to get in front of it again. Another save for her. Kick not great off the side of her foot. Brianna Hunter will keep it alive for Arkansas. I see what Day was trying to do, play quickly and into space and into her team there. Uh, just can't get away from those red jerseys, though. Every turn tonight for Missouri State has just been red jersey after red jersey. So just the shin guards being ready to reset. Been a quiet first 20 or 10 minutes or so in this half. Arkansas has had a couple of opportunities. A couple of shots on goal in the second half. And that run will be quelled before it can get any momentum from Emily Hauser of Cape Coral, Florida. I'm sure she wishes she was in Florida tonight. Brisk evening. At Razorback Field. DiFilippo with the interception on the Throw in. Anna Padgel looking for space, looking for her sister on the far side. Ellie on her horse, able to get in front of it. Ball played into the box. Danger and crisis averted for Missouri State for the moment. In games like this, Kelly, when you're up four goals or multiple goals in a second half. How hard is it to keep that composure, keep that focus, and try and keep you know the pressure applied to, to get a fifth or a sixth goal? Um, for Arkansas, I wouldn't say it's that hard, only because that's the standard for this team, and that's why they are so good. Um, they are not satisfied until the game is over, and the game 
uh, ends up with them on top. And so I think that's, again, one of the things that makes them so great. I remember back when Coach Hale told us earlier this season that complacency isn't even in his vocabulary. And so I think that's just something that he has taught this team. Um, no matter what the score is, you don't get complacent. Certainly doesn't look like in his ninth appearance in the NCAA tournament that his squad in 2022 has come out in this first round of, and been complacent. They've been on the attack. One of their better performances in recent weeks. Trying to wipe away that result in the SEC tournament against Vanderbilt. As we look across the bracket and games going on this evening. Alabama now up 8-0 over Jackson State. Pouring it on in the first round. It's easy to see why they're the one seed and had such a great season this year in the Southeastern Conference. We'll be getting either Arizona State or Portland in the second round. So a couple of West Coast teams will have to make a couple of time zone journey to make it to Tuscaloosa. Get back underway. Elsewhere in the conference, Georgia up 2 0 over Sanford. Came into the tournament a seven seed. Sienna Potagil there, one of the many honorees in the Southeastern Conference. The only one on the first team, but. The second team 11 full of young Razorbacks. As the program continues to build for Kobe Hale. We talked about this before we went on air, Kelly, but when I first arrived in Fayetteville 2016, most of the players on the team were Tulsa natives or from Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. And now you look up and down this roster, they're from all over the country as this program is started to fill out and Kobe Hale's vision is, is being fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, the recruiting has truly expanded. Close shot on goal there for Arkansas. Uh, but yeah, everyone wants to come play now for Coach Hale because of the things he has done um, to this program. And so I just think that speaks volumes. Yeah, Tankersley with a rocket off of a right foot. Knuckled right over the crossbar. If it had been on the mark, Day was not going to be able to catch up to that one. Not much you can do in those situations as a keeper. No, upper 90, that's when you just say, good job, great goal. Just smile and <laughs> wave it by as it goes past. But again, pressure stays on for Arkansas. Still trying to find that elusive fifth goal. Something Coach Shields talked about earlier this season, goals tend to come in waves. and. There was a typhoon, it felt like, in that first 12 minutes or so of the first half. The four goals go through, but it's been rather calm waters for Kirk Nelson, Camille Day, and the rest of the Missouri State Bears team. Dangerous challenge for Arkansas, but referee says play on. Missouri State with an opportunity trying to make something happen. And Barbara steps right in front of it, makes easy work of it. Barbara looking for her 12th clean sheet. Already set a program record with 11. Ball played in. That will scamper out of play for the goal kick. Coming into the game, Abby Hansen, freshman from Overland Park, Kansas. Placing Haley Chambliss, freshman from Eureka, Missouri, right outside of St. Louis. Freshman of the year in the Missouri Valley was Chambliss. Great cornerstone piece. Kirk Nelson and the Bears can build around for the next three years. 
near disaster for days. She comes up to try and take the ball away from Tankersley. We'll safely scamper out of play. State able to go on a run. This is Benedict, MVP of the Missouri Valley Tournament. Missouri State looking for something, anything whipped in. Barbara able to get a couple of hands to it. A collision with one of her own players. Danger still in the area for Arkansas, but the chaos has been contained. Susi with it, lays it off, but good interception from Missouri State. It'll be Brianna Hunter's throw. It was a great job by Grace to come off of her line there and just do what she can to punch the ball away um, and get up and focus on if there's another if there's a rebound. Kept her eyes on the play. Couldn't quite make the clean save, so was very aware to that rebound situation. Lots of space at the top of the 18 for the Razorbacks. Ball played in for Hunter. Just a bit too strong. Lost it a little too far. Hunter, one of the few seniors on this Razorback team from Pflugerville, Texas. And that's Pflugerville with a P and an F and a L U G E R. And it's one of the interesting names of Texas. Major backs working it. On the left wing. Played into the box. Still the advantage with the Razorbacks. As they will reset at midfield. Erzin looking to the corner to play a ball in. Will keep her off her line. Arkansas not able to do anything with the scoring opportunity. It'll be a throw for Brianna Hunter. A couple of dangerous moments for the Razorbacks, but not able to get the end result. Susie looking for a great save. Made by Camille Day. Keeps the ball out of the back of the net. Susie wanted it. The Wilkesboro, North Carolina native. Huge save by Day there. She has had a busy, busy evening. 27 shots tonight for the Razorbacks. Four have gone in. Not the greatest of corner kicks. I'm sure Kobe Hill will have that one clipped off for film study next week. Something to work on even this late into this in the second half. Day for six, this is Isabel Park, Park in for number 15, Caroline Carter. Isabel Burke, senior from St. Louis, checking in for the Bears from Webster Groves High School, a transfer from St. Louis University, as a matter of fact. Her former school, the two seed in this side of the bracket. They'll be hosting if they beat Memphis tomorrow. And a rocket just north of the bar for the Razorbacks. Still that fifth goal 
will not come, and it is a platoon change on the way for Arkansas. And is Kobe Hill going to empty the bench? Grace Barbara. I'm sure that is a great sign to see. You know that that means you have done your job as a keeper. As the first teamers come out. Yeah, leadership starts from the back line, and, and she brings so much of that and so much confidence to this team. Um, I know that she feels like I have your back if you have mine kind of thing, and uh, bringing those fresh legs in is, is a good sign for her. Flynn will intercept, looking to play something into the 18. And the back heel pass to no one. Will be intercepted by Gracie English. Aragon trying to play something in. From just outside the 18, can't. We'll reset with the goal kick. But only as far as a Cardinal jersey. It's just been one of those nights for Missouri State. Arkansas came in number nine in the country. A three seed in this NCAA tournament. Yes, Flynn has been awarded the free kick. Looking to whip something in. Played in again near the penalty spot. Back out of the 18. Another rocket sent towards the goal. But second time unlucky again for Emily Hauser. Trying to get into the stat sheet this evening with a goal. I don't think the Razorbacks are going to let up no matter how much time is left. Uh, they're going to continue to take those shots no matter how far out they are. Certainly nothing to lose. With that four goal cushion. We have 22 and a half to go in this one before Arkansas can officially say it's in the second round. But a run here from Missouri State trying to change things halfway through the second half. Missouri is just really struggling trying to connect feet tonight and, and winning that first and second ball is really hurting them as well. Just, just getting these opportunities. Quickly, defense to offense. Aragon trying to find a running Flynn in stride. Can't. Opportunity for Missouri State, dispossessed easily by Hauser. Some subs now coming in for Missouri State. The Bears looking to make a few changes. Emma Hensley will come in. Senior from Edwardsville, Illinois. Missouri State, State, number three, Seniors Emma getting Hensley. some run tonight. Number 16, 80s Hubbard. And number 26 would be their final <laughs> match as a Missouri State Bear. I will say no matter the outcome tonight for this Missouri State team, they have the right mindset. And what Coach Nelson told us earlier this week that it's about the process. And this is his first year as head coach. Um, he said he's excited. He think the team, the coaching staff, and everyone has stuck to that process week in and week out. Um, and they'll continue to, you know, hung to their core values and stick to their style of play. And they have a lot to learn. The theme of the their uh, year this year that they started was to create a new identity. Um, and I think if anything tonight, no matter the outcome and no matter the score, they can lean on that. And Kelly, that might be something you can speak to. You know, 
with Arkansas, same situation. Coach Hale comes in, able to build this program. And for these seniors from Missouri State, if this were to be their last match, know that they've laid the ground, the found, foundation, excuse me, uh, for maybe something great in, in Springfield. Absolutely. I mean, back when I came uh, or played at Arkansas, it was 2012, and Coach Hale just came in and started the program from scratch. I was a part of his first team to ever go to the NCAA tournament. And when I asked him, uh, you know, what does he teach these girls to, to let them know that making it to the NCAA tournament isn't guaranteed? I know it's a new standard for this team, which is incredible, but what does he instill in them to let them know it's not a given? And he said, you know what, we show them the video of that team uh, back in 2013 when we made it to the NCAAs every year, and he wants them to know that, you know, it isn't a given. Winning is hard. Getting here is hard. And so he reminds them over and over again, and it's credit to him and the program that he's built. It certainly is, as you see, Coach Nelson of Missouri State. You know, certainly maybe not the result that he wanted this evening, a, a bit of a dream run for this first season ahead of schedule for what a rebuild might look like for Missouri State. But you definitely have to hang on to the fact that Missouri State finished as one of the best schools in women's soccer this season. They were able to make it to the tournament. Not everybody gets to do that. Able to win their conference as well. The conference tournament, rather, finished second in the regular season standings in the Missouri Valley. This team on the right trajectory. I'm certain the future bright for the Bears of Missouri State. Coach Nelson has built a great young core. And we'll have a foul. I believe Bukite was the one who committed the foul from Missouri State. Flynn will take the free kick for the Razorbacks. You see the jostling for position. Flynn will send it into the box. Ball come right back to her practically. Andrew Ellsworth will call another foul. That'll be as far as the advantage will be for Arkansas this go round. Great turn for the Razorbacks. It will keep the pressure on. Love to know the possession stats for both teams, as I would imagine. It would be in the 80s to maybe even low 90s for what Arkansas has been able to command on Razorback Field this evening. Yeah, unfortunately for Missouri State, they are just in defensive mode, trying to clear the ball when they can. There are so many red jerseys around them, and it just seems like they can't catch a break. We go under 17 minutes in this one. Pre-business major Keller Matisse gets us underway from the throw. Only six seniors for this Razorback team. A couple of graduates in Brianna Hunter and Grace Barbara. So a few holes, big holes there coming for the Razorbacks, but a big freshman class, Kelly. Twelve freshmen on the roster for the Razorbacks. The future still continues to be bright as the, the foundation seems to have been laid by Kobe Hale and company. And now it's time to build the house. Matisse trying to throw it in deep. Try to play something into the box, she will. Foul down around the six. We'll send it back to Missouri State. Getting evened on 
free kicks and clearances and goal kicks. Missouri State just can't quite seem to not find a red jersey as Arkansas has in fact been in Kurt Nelson's words, chaotic tonight. Chaos has brought four goals home. A few more subs coming in for the Razorbacks. Looks like the first teamers have recharged. See the Potagels ready to come back in. Brianna Hunter as well. Because in a lot of ways it might be a little demoralizing for the other side. Seeing fresh legs into the, the, the first team. Number 11, Trot back out on the Razorback 16, field, Kelly. Yeah, they, they know the, the test is still number on and the time Ainsley is Irvin. not over. So they've number got a lot of games. Number 99, Zoe Sussy. Sussy. Number 99, we'll stay with Arkansas. Flynn, quick throw. Plays it out for Erzin. Whipped into the box. Anna Pondigil had a chance at it. Great leaping save from Camille Day. Brianna Hunter thought she had a goal. Day thinks otherwise. I think Day at this point is just saying, I just want to catch a break. <laughs> I just want to catch my breath. She has been on it all evening. Danger still not completely clear. She's all smiles there with Ava Tankersley. Tankersley tried to head it in. Finally cleared away. Now it's a foot race to see who can get to the free ball. It is Arkansas, but it'll be Missouri's throw. Carly Rounding. Into Missouri State, between the corner kick again, played him right in for Tankersley. Right idea. Tankersley had the positioning on Day, but just a little too tall for her. And the Bears will continue the second half clean sheet. And that could be something, Kelly, that. Coach Nelson and the Bears can take away if this result were to hold. Is you did hold one of the top ten teams in the country to a clean sheet in the second half, a, a team that is known for keeping the pressure on regardless of the score. That's something you can build upon and can look toward uh, to your, your returning players for the 2023 season. Absolutely. I definitely think that is a positive for them to walk away uh, with that mindset and just taking it half by half and breaking it apart. Ball played in over the crossbar. The ball will stay with the Razorbacks. Another corner kick attempt upcoming. Camille Day doubled over. She has had her work cut out for her this evening. A cold night in Fayetteville. Ball played back in. And out of play as Camille Day can take a sigh of relief. As you see the bundled up fans still here, even after quick four goals. Sticking with the Razorback women's soccer team. They're looking to advance to another second round. See Ellie Potajil, one of our three goal scorers tonight. Used to saying her sister's name, but Anna held out of the score column thus far this evening. About ten minutes to go. Great play from Di Filippo goes to the ground, still able to stick with it. 
She's got two goals to her name this evening. Had a couple opportunities at a third, but was denied just a brace for her this evening. Looks for the third, and she gets it. Top corner, back in the net. Not much you can do about that one. Jessica DiFilippo, have yourself a first round of the tournament. A hat trick for number 11 in your program. Yeah, that is another one that Camille Day just can you can't do anything about. You say, great shot. Um, just a huge, huge opportunity for Arkansas. Way to finish that. Brianna Hunter, the assist. Filippo Gets three on the night. The Quebec, Canada native. Showing why she's one of the senior leaders on this team. As that one will pretty much really put this one to bed with 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go. But Razorback still hungry for more back on the attack. As they're looking for more. Would be commanding victory. As the SEC in this first round has flexed its muscles with a couple of big blowouts. Might say, Kelly, the balance of power might have switched a little bit in women's soccer. Traditionally, the ACC, Big Ten, those are your power conferences in this competition. But Arkansas coming to play. Alabama a one seed this season. LSU a uh, dominating performance. It looks like the Southeastern Conference might have a little momentum. The SEC has always been a tough conference, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to play in it. However, like you say, the competition continues to rise. I mean, schools like Arkansas and Tennessee and others continue to, you know, work their way up on the ranking board, and it just says a lot about um, the players that are playing in this conference and the teams and the programs and how they're succeeding. Come on. Arkansas on another run, looking for more. Day able to bring this one in. This one whipped in by Ava Tankersley. And you don't see this too often, a substitute at keeper. Grace Barbara's night is done. Whipple will check in, go from zero to double zero. It's never a bad idea to get get another keeper sometime, especially in the NCAA tournament. Um, these games are tough, and they need the practice. I'm sure also Grace Barber was probably also like, hey, can I warm up now? <laughs> like, I, There's not been much for me to do this, this game. Yeah, who's handing me a jacket and, and some sweatpants? Well, as Barber will head to the sideline to de-thaw. Razorbacks trying to keep the heat on. The Missouri State Bears, another corner kick, looking for six goals this evening. <laughs> Three of the five coming from Jessica DiFilippo. Razorbacks can continue at this pace. Should be a dangerous team the rest of the way in this tournament. Yeah, I would say whatever Coach Hale told them in the past few weeks of training ever since the SEC tournament, he needs to keep telling them because their emphasis on scoring and the opportunities of finishing that they've had tonight um, has really, really helped them. And while, yes, maybe the result in the SEC tournament isn't what they wanted at the end of the day, this is the one that really matters. This one's the one you get the big trophy at the end of the season. As Arkansas trying to go on another run, made an Elite Eight a year ago. As you see Grace Barber excited for her keeper colleague, and Peyton Whipple makes the save. And you love to see that on the sideline from Barbara, even communicating and coaching, even though her night is done. 
Yeah, I, we used to call it, I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but we used to call it goalie love um, and the camaraderie that we had with all the keepers. Um, and it's just super special, so really cool to see that of Grace. And also, if you notice, Grace did not get a coat, so going to have to talk it over with some of her teammates, maybe Linder one. But she's doing some jumps and some claps and things like that on the sideline, trying to just desperately stay warm. As Erzin nearly beats her mark. Able to win a corner out of it. As it looks like another mass exodus of substitutes for the Razorbacks and Bears. Number two, Ainsley Jeffrey. Number six, Leah Webby. Number nine, Keller Matisse. In a lot of ways, I would imagine, Kelly, this is also an opportunity just to run some time off of the 5-18 that's remaining in this one. Number 36, yeah. Limit Taylor any opportunity Berman. for injury or anything Number along those lines. Definitely, and this is the point in the season where injuries unfortunately do happen. So, um, you know, trading off your team uh, when you can and uh, allowing them to have some rest while also running the clock down is, is definitely a strategy they have. And from Missouri State, Bella Bryson. Jenna Anderson Jade take this Loftus. free kick off the foul. And Maddie Augustine. Working that far wing, Arkansas again. Dispossessed. Great job there from Schlapper to step in front of that one. And the ball will roll out of play. Another corner upcoming. As Izzy Lubert will head to the corner. And Arzen will be the one to actually take it. Pardon Aragon will whip it in, 33. And she'll send it into the top netting of the goal. Three and a half minutes to go in this one. I think the wind played a little factor there. Flag is flying pretty hard. I'm sure that's uh, Sophia Aragon would agree with you whenever she has to explain to, to Kobe Hill why that <laughs> one ended up out of play. Oh, coach, it was the wind. Yeah. It was the wind. Yeah, reasonable. It, it definitely is a windy <laughs> night. So hopefully Coach Hale will have some grace on that one. Another opportunity for the Razorbacks played in. At the worst, will just be a corner. Seems like these last 10 minutes or so, Arkansas has lived in the 18 of Missouri State. As they are not wanting to take their foot off the gas, they want to play a full 90 minute contest. And no matter what, it seems like they do everything they can to get a, a corner kick. Played in, Day gets a couple of hands to it off the crossbar, still alive. Day punches it out of play, it'll be a corner on the other side. Day did everything she could there. See it played in, Day keeps her eyes on it. Punch it clear. Corner opportunity, that one nowhere near the net. Another opportunity for the wind to have gotten <laughs> a hold of that one. If 
Final 90 seconds. Separating Arkansas and another trip to the second round of the NCAA tournament where they'll take on the Ohio State Buckeyes and has an outside chance of hosting the second round games and third round as well depending upon the result of the St. Louis Memphis game tomorrow at 2 Eastern 1 Central. been a great season for the Missouri State Bears. Won their conference tournament, but looks like the road will end in Fayetteville. And I think for Coach Hill, he said it best, you know, when we do what we're supposed to do and we look like we're supposed to look like, you don't even have to ask me what I thought about the game because you know that's Arkansas and that's what we did. And one more goal. Why not? 20 goal seconds to go in the game. No offsides flags. It'll count. Make it six to nothing. One for good measure. Give that one to Mio Weeby, junior from Kingwood, Texas. 5-9 forward. Gets her first goal of the season with 19 seconds or so left in this one. Special night for her. And on the other side of the coin, you see Camille Day. She's done all she can for her team, but just was not Eight, enough tonight nine, for the Missouri eight, State Bears. Seven, six, five, four, three. So that ball will go out of play. The final horn will sound. Arkansas moves on. Six to nothing. The final score over the Missouri State Bears. The season over for the first year head coach of Kirk Nelson in Springfield. Lots to look forward for him, but again, five straight years. Arkansas at least gone to the second round, and their sights are set on much more than just the Elite Eight. Yeah, they are already focusing on the second round. Coach Hale always said celebrate for five minutes and get ready for the next game. So I'm sure that is what they are doing. As you see the celebrations, we'll take a look at the bracket after the results that have already come here in a moment. You see Coach Hale cool as a cucumber on a cold night in Fayetteville. He's ready to see his second round opponent has in store. 